In a quiet place, the road ahead, you are dropped into a world of silence, fear, and a whole lot of sneaking around monsters that can hear even the tiniest pin drop. I have never watched the movie, so I went into this one with a very limited information. I knew the movies included monsters that hunt based on sound, and everyone has to be super quiet, hence the quiet place name. The trailer seemed to promise just that, so I went in, hoping for a solid horror experience. And honestly, it delivered on quite a few fronts. But it also tripped up a little in some key areas. Starting with probably the most important part of the game, which is the sound design. In most cases, it is incredible. You are constantly on edge, listening to the faintest creaks and shuffles as you move through the levels hoping to keep your sound lower than the ambient sound around you. You do end up getting a device to measure and compare these two sound levels, which is handy. The environmental sounds are excellent, from the wind to all the loud clang of bumping into metal cans. The sound design is the game's brightest spot. And in a game where you are constantly trying to be quiet, everything feels so much louder especially those clicking noises the monster keeps on making. And the uncanny silence of the world is made even more jarring when you get to play sequences from the time when the meteor was landing, allowing you to hear the world before. Just walking through nature then, listening to the birds and various nature sounds, and then realizing how quiet the world has become. But while the sound design is pretty amazing, it does also have some flaws. I did end up having to mute the in-game music because it would very frequently play this startle sound, usually in response to seeing the monster or making a little bit too much noise, and it was kind of loud and jarring and genuinely kept on ripping me out of the experience. When I googled how to get rid of the startle sound, it was the developers who recommended muting the music. And honestly, the game is so much better that way. Instead of being constantly startled by like this really jarring sound, you instead get to enjoy the tension of hearing the monster moving around, which is just way more intimidating than any loud note the game can play at annoying times. Now, the monster itself is terrifying. Knowing it can pinpoint you from the tiniest of sounds makes the moment where you're sneaking around them very intense. This was especially in the early game when I was still figuring out how to move around and how the monster worked. As I progressed through the game, I got more used to it. I learned how to handle the sounds and environments, and I figured out how the monster kind of moved around. But, but there were still plenty of moments where there was a lot of tension, and I had a lot of fun with it. The two main mechanics you're dealing with when it comes to the monster is sneaking around, being very quiet, and also avoiding the monster's scanning ability, which allows the monster to see you if you move, but only when it's doing the scanning. This is kind of fun as it allows you to play this kind of red light, green light game with a monster, but it also has the issue of having a rather loud ringing noise that plays while the monster is using that ability. But while it did not find the audio enjoyable, it still worked really well. The story is in many ways predictable, but not bad. You play Alex, a young woman. She is going through a very traumatic experience, but comes off as believable enough and I felt motivated to keep her safe. I found the side characters to be less interesting. I struggled to connect with them as the story felt very predictable. Some pleasant surprises here and there. Overall, the story is, well, predictable. Though not necessarily bad, it is, it is told well enough. And it works well to get you through the main meat of the game, which is the sneaking around gameplay. And there were little moments of world building which I thoroughly enjoyed. My favorite places were the various safe houses you enter, as there you can find notes from people who were there before you, children's drawing, conversations on paper and little diaries. 
These help build up the world and tell little stories about the people who were there once. Now, as we move back into gameplay, there is one neat feature this game has, and that is you can play with your microphone on. You can set it up in the menu and adjust the microphone as needed, and then the monster will detect any sounds you make. So if you sneeze, cough, or in my case, have a playful puppy in the room, you are gonna die. It's thrilling and could add an interesting angle to the game, if that is something you're interested in. Now, the main gameplay consists of sneaking around areas, solving simple puzzles, and trying to move around, making as little sound as possible, while avoiding the monsters. Sometimes the monsters are just somewhere off in the area, and sometimes they're very close to you. This is a game about meticulous sneaking around, so you are gonna be moving slowly. And I really enjoy the sneaking part, but there definitely were some design choices that I did not like. You see, Alex has asthma, but not just any type of asthma. But she has some weird horror game version of asthma, which leads to you having to fumble with an inhaler every five minutes. Her lungs start closing up from pretty much everything. Running, climbing, dust, carrying heavy things, monster being too close. Her lungs will start seizing up and you better use that inhaler or she is gonna become loud and that is not good. And for some reason, every inhaler only has one puff in it and they are scattered all over the place. They're basically this game's version of health packs and I found them kinda silly. But don't worry, it's not just inhalers, there are also pills that are also scattered around everywhere that can help you a little bit too. I don't know how that works, but different from the inhaler, which Alex will happily pick up and carry with her, she will not pick up any pills. She will either eat them where they are, or, well, you can't interact with them, which just feels weird. Now, the asthma does add extra challenge to the game, but I don't think it was needed. The game's strength and main feature is quietly making your way through an area while avoiding a sound-sensitive monster. The asthma mechanic simply felt a little bit too gamey for me, and often just downright frustrating in the worst way. And yet, the game does what it promises. This is a game about tense, slow, sneaking around while trying to make no sound, mapping out your path, avoiding various sound obstacles, and finding your way to safety. With sound design and world building being the highlights, the game gave me everything it promised, and I had a good time with it even if there are design choices that left me confused and sometimes frustrated. If you want to play a game that is all about quiet stealth, or you want to get to try out living in the world of a quiet place, then a quiet place the road ahead might just be the game for you. Of course, play with the mic on at your own risk if you happen to have a puppy. But tell me, what do you think about a quiet place the road ahead? Is it something you would be interested in playing? Have you played it already, and what did you think about it? Let's talk about it in the comments. And while you're down there, make sure to do the good YouTube stuff, subscribe for more reviews and gameplay videos, and like the video to convince the algorithmic overlords to be nice. But in the end, all I want to say is tak for a horva, og the intes